Hello, and welcome to Mission Driven Monday. I'm here with my good friend, Lydia Mays. Lydia is the founder and executive director of See Beautiful, which is a philanthropic organization that funds giving initiatives around the world. She's married to her true love, Andrew, and they live here in Atlanta. Lydia has her PhD, and uh, she taught literature in uh, at Georgia State University, and she is also a children's book author. So she has lots of um, just exciting things under her belt, and I admire her immensely. She has helped me with Forever We and just become a really good friend over the years. We met about four years ago on a retreat that was for creative entrepreneurs, and I'm just so glad that my path crossed paths with Lydia. So welcome, Lydia. Thank you so much. The feeling is um, very mutual. It's so okay. great. Well, I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, we're going to start like we do every Monday with three questions. And I'll give you the first question. And it is, what are you most proud of? What's your proudest accomplishment? A great question um, that I have thought about for a long time because it seems like there was a really obvious answer and then it's kind of morphed as I've thought more about it. Um, so I was a classroom teacher um, for a long time and realized as kind of the education climate was shifting, I really wanted to go back to school and get my PhD and have a stronger voice for youth and educators in the field. And so I left my teaching job and, and I did, I went to GSU and I got my PhD and hypothetically that should really be a, a very you know exciting achievement. But yes. interestingly, um, about, Four years after I got my PhD, the opportunity to start See Beautiful um, came about. And when I think back maybe on my proudest moment, um, actually making the decision to leave the university where I felt very safe, where mm -hmm. I had a paycheck and health insurance and and. And I knew I loved what I did. Um, and so it was, I was very um, purposeful in, in making that decision, but it was also scary, sure. you know, um, to do too. And so I think that actually kind of taking that leap of blind faith into trusting that Sea Beautiful could be something that could possibly make a bigger impact was, was something I'm most proud of. Well, and you should be proud of that because it has made a huge impact. And I'm sure you've probably seen, as I've seen in my own life, that all those things that I've done leading up to where I am right now, like none of it was wasted. Like I bet you've used every bit of that knowledge and training and um, people that you've met and just everything you've been able to use that as you've been leading Sea Beautiful. You're exactly right. I thought in the beginning with Sea Beautiful, I was really deviating from this path of, you know, my expertise and mm -hmm. the time that I had spent in the education world only to find See Beautiful has grown this entire component of See Beautiful clubs that happen in schools. And so it's quite possible now the impact that we're able to make with children and with teachers could be stronger than if I was still at the university level. Yeah. Or and I, and I didn't expect it to happen that way, um, but thank goodness it has. <laughs> I love it. Yes, yes. Well, I love it too. And um, for those of you that don't know, See Beautiful is all about seeing more beautiful in ourselves, uh, seeing more beautiful in others, and creating more beautiful in the world. And I will definitely put a link to Lydia's See Beautiful page um, in the comment section of this post because I really would love for all of you to check it out. She has some great products available there. She highlights some um, just amazing organizations that are doing fabulous work across the globe. Just like you and forever we. Yeah. 
Thank you, thank you. All right, our second question is, what are you learning right now? What are you working on? I love to learn from other people. And so when I ask this question, it's because I truly do want to know, like, what, what are you working on right now? What are you learning? So I'm learning French. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this happened because one of the nonprofits we work with probably the most closely is located in Eastern Congo. And as our relationship with this nonprofit has evolved, there are growing opportunities to be able to travel and host educational seminars for some of the teachers with whom we get to work. And as we've started planning this with the nonprofit that we work with, one of the conversations was we're going to have to build in so much time for translations. And, um, often the very first language that um, the teachers and students are learning in this area of Congo where we work is French. And, you know, I started to really realize if we're embedding ourselves in this community, as we have for the past three years in different ways, it, the logical next step is to, for me to be able to authentically communicate with a community mm -hmm. that I would be so honored to engage, you know, with. And um, so while I say learning French, I also joke because really it's trying to figure out Rosetta Stone. Yes. <laughs> you know, trying to click through that and trying to spend a few minutes every day, you know, like right. the last few minutes of um, every afternoon, my husband will call when he leaves work. And so that's when I'll hop on to Rosetta Stone and I'll spend that time. Um, but it's, it's exciting, I think, too, because it's kind of opened some new doors and that like there's some new opportunities in Haiti that we might engage in and mm -hmm. they French and Haiti. And so it feels like this is the right um, path to be taking to really be authentic in the way that we engage in our communities. Oh, I love that. So my, um, my favorite language or I actually have a minor in Spanish, but I'm not fluent. And so I've recently downloaded the Duolingo app online. I don't know if you use that, but it's like you can do it in any language and it's so fun because it's like a game. And so every day, just like 10 minutes of practicing on Duolingo and you earn oh points God. and, you know, like kind of get prizes and not really, but, um, I do this. It, it's so fun. So Duolingo might be a little fun thing for you to do in addition to Rosetta Stone, like just for fun. Cause yes. It's a little easier than Rosetta Stone. <laughs> okay. Okay. Maybe I need to start there and then take the bigger yeah. step then. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Here it's time for our third question. Okay. My favorite question of all, because I love forward movement. I love thinking about the future. I love to think about what's ahead. So when you think about your future and the person that you're trying to become or the person that you want to be, what are the, like the three words that you would use to describe the person that you're becoming or that you want to be known for? Yeah, I so appreciated this question because it helped me realign a passion for this as well. So the three words that most quickly came to mind and the very first was an, a resounding um, contentment. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes as an entrepreneur, um, but also someone who lives in the South and it's a, you know, we, we move, you know, we're busy and we do yeah. stuff. And I think that the word contentment can sometimes have this knee jerk reaction that it's, that it's almost lazy, that it's mm -hmm. this like laid back kind of feeling when I think contentment is very focused on, on being in this space. And, and that kind of thinking then led me to, well, 
what feelings are associated with contentment, right? How do you embody contentment, which is really the two other words that I thought of. Um, and the first is just being content and being in a love filled space. And, you know, I could reread Bob Goff's love does and everybody always yes yes i they just i feel like they they embody this contentment of being love filled you know mm -hmm. why why would we try to be anything else like if we yeah. could just set that intention for life that's a pretty beautiful way to go through life and and yet something can happen in life and redirect that thought. But, you know, the faster we can get back on that train of thinking is, um, is a thrilling way to live. And so the other kind of prong of contentment, the other word that I thought of is um, that I'd like to be giving filled. Um, and I know that kind of seems like an oxymoron, those two words, but if we could just fill ourselves with this vision of ways to give and whether that be love, you know, whether that be our time, a conversation, a smile, um, I think that sort of the root of the root of all great things comes from giving, right? If we yes. can give our love to people, if we can give forgiveness and grace. And, um, and I think that we don't have to overthink it, right? We can do that in this realm of contentment, you know, mm -hmm. in, that, in that really peaceful space of just honoring that that's what life gets to be. Um, and all of that sounds really great, but, but you know, you, you get caught up in other things and that can be hard. And so as a vision for my future self, for my today self, but myself tomorrow and five years down the road and 10 years down the road, I think that what a life well lived, if we can honor that mind space of contentment that kind of breeds love and giving to the world. Yeah, I love that because I think that a lot of times people think, well, if I give so much away, I'm going to be left empty. And the opposite of that is true, right? Like the more we give away, the more fulfilled that we are. And what I've seen happen, um, I mean, you say you're working on this or you want this to be your future. I mean, this is who you are. And I can attest to that from having seen it firsthand and to see how the love that you give away and the things that you give away is, is multiplied over and over again um, through the people that you are able to interact with and to serve and to inspire. Um, that I hope that people who have heard this conversation today will be inspired um, to live like Lydia and to be to be willing and able to give and serve and love. And like I said, I will include the links to Lydia's um, beautiful website, seebeautiful.com. And um, I hope that you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. Thanks. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome.